Oh, this, this is a trick question. Oh God, this is like career ending. <laughs> they see me roll. Oh, nope. Nope. Okay. Okay, calm down. okay. So, yeah, you guys asked a bunch of questions last week. We got online. We posted a video, on, I think, on, on Facebook, on Headlight Junkies. Mm -hmm. uh, we had some questions come in through YouTube, mm -hmm. and we promised that if you guys asked, we would answer. So we went through and picked out a bunch of the good questions. Um, I've not seen those questions, so I don't really know. I haven't premeditated any of this, but uh, my, my trusty advisor here, Andrew, is going to read some of those off for me and uh, I think we'll just kind of go through and see what happens. Totally. Uh, so let's start it off. Uh, mini, I'm uh, sorry, MLED 2.0 right-hand drive. Ah, MLED 2.0 right-hand drive. So uh, the left-hand drive projector is actually, it's, it's taken off. Um, so I mean, it's easily our best-selling projector right now. I think we kind of finally cracked the code with LED. Um, Yoshi really killed it on that design and it is, it is really impressive, it's actually, Shameful that we're here doing this video because we have yet to do a review video on the MLED 2.0. Right. Yeah. Um, but that being said, um, despite the fact that it's really popular, I don't know if we're actually going to do a right-hand drive version. I think it's yet to be determined. Um, you know, right-hand drive projectors in general, and if you look at you know sales data for the MLED 1.0, it makes up a small fraction of the sales, like two percent. Um, and so that being said, we're kind of evaluating the over-under on the tooling cost to see if it even really makes sense. Um, so for all you guys who live across the pond, well, you might be sh** of luck. Uh, 14 and up Fiesta XBLED headlights. Are they ever gonna happen or no? Uh, we have not evaluated the Fiesta for an XBLED headlight. Um, you know, as far as the cars go, you know, they're kind of, they've, they've kind of lost precedence over, the, you know, compared to the trucks. So, I mean, where we have full coverage for you know, the F-150s, the Super Duties, you know, throughout the different, um, you know, model years. I don't know if we'll do it for the Fiesta. You know, the, the Mustang is, is obviously Ford's best-selling small car. And even relative to like the F-150s and the Super Duty, we don't really sell that many Mustangs. So, you know, for, for you, Mr. Fiesta, probably gonna be, you know, doing a retrofit sometime soon. Uh, so will there ever be a bracket to fit an MLED 2.0 into a 16 Accord? That's, I think, the 4TLR fitment. Yeah, that's gonna be a no for me, Doug. Um, the 16 Accord uses a two and a half inch lens projector, and the MLED is a three inch projector. So bracket or no bracket, you would not be able to do that. We got a lot of no's here so far. Yes. Hopefully I got some good news for somebody. So far, zero for three. <laughs> uh, Mini H1 8.0. Mini H1 8.0, yeah. uh, Mini H1 8.0. So yes, this is a, this is going to be a yes. Uh, the Mini H1 8.0 is happening. Uh, the 8.0 is going to have the new the AR coated lens, same as the MLED 2.0, same as the D2S 5.0. Um, it will have the Moto holders as standard equipment in place of the old crappy bulb holders oh, yeah. for maximum bulb alignment. And what else? It'll have the uh, the ECE slope, so it'll have a slope cutoff shield. So again, matching the same standard as the MLED and the D2S 5.0. Um, that way for people who want to do quads with HID, like a 5.0, 8.0 setup, um, you know, the beam pattern will match really nice. Sure. When will they be coming out? Yeah. I'm not going to say. Okay. Maybe 2020, we'll see. Soon. Do you guys ever have in-shop events at your location? I live fairly close to Atlanta and would like to pay a visit for more than just browsing. Mm, pay a visit. Pay a visit. Yes. Uh, we do, yeah. Once annually, we have our big open house. Uh, we did our last one in October. Um, generally, you know, fair weather here in Atlanta. Summers tend to be pretty brutal. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we had a DJ, bunch of free barbecue. We had catered for everybody who came out. Um, you know, live music, tons of cars, a bunch of products on display. Generally, a good time. Awesome. I might even sign your hat. <laughs> cool. Uh, cool. Cool, dude. Yeah. Uh, on that note, why do open houses, oh, there's a hat. I got you, man. Why do open houses bring rain showers? 
There seems uh, to be a, a very Yeah, so I guess somebody who was at our last open house, yeah, unfortunately it did rain that day, which was kind of a bummer. Um, does it rain usually at open houses? It normally doesn't, but it has the past few. Dude, I don't know, man. It's just been nonstop raining here in Atlanta in general, so I oh. guess it's just our luck lately. We had a couple sunny days this past weekend, and I was certainly out there enjoying it, but um, I don't know. It's always trying to rain on our parade, I guess. I don't have a good answer for that, but damn you, rain. <laughs> Is Morimoto's production capacity impacted by the coronavirus? So far, so good. You know, I think it remains to be seen how the, con how the conditions uh, change or improve over there, but so far, uh, we are not impacted too much by it, yeah. thankfully. Yeah. Will you be doing another Headlight Wars anytime soon? Headlight Wars. So that was something that we did once. That was what, back in 17, 16, 16 something like that, uh, where we had some professional retrofitters come out. We did it kind of as a, uh, you know, something that we did at the same time as our open house for people to come and watch. And it was fun. It was kind of a production to put it on. It was kind of a pain in the butt. I think people people had fun with it. People enjoyed it. Um, we've considered doing it again, but I think TBD. Okay. TBD. We'll see what happens. If you guys want to join Headlight Wars, if you want to come out and compete, let us know in the comments. We'll see. What color are Matt's undies? I don't know. I have a lot of undies. Today I have uh, gray, gray camo, gray camo today. As you can see, I, I wear a lot of gray. A lot of boring gray. Yeah, mostly gray. Any plans for a powerhouse ballast 2.0 or a new adjustable ballast? The adjustable ballast, actually, that was something that I came up with. I thought it was a cool idea so that you could have more power on the high beam, you know, without risking long-term damage to your reflectors by running that high power 24-7 right. with your lights on. Um, unfortunately, it just really never caught on, um, so I don't really know why. I think that if, if I was you know, running a, an HID setup, um, I, would, I would run it. They're really simple, easy setup, but they just never caught on. So uh, I think the powerhouse will be the last of that kind. First and last. First and last. Any plans on that? I think that was actually somebody on Headlight Junkies that suggested we do that. It was something about the modified OEM ones, and somebody was adding a switch to one at one point. Yeah. And they're like, why don't we just make it standard yeah. out of the box? I was like, yeah, it seems like a good idea, but... Too little, too late. Any plans on adding RGB dancing strips or halos? That's the, like the chasing effect. Not the sequential, but like the programmable. I'm out. No. <laughs> no. Just no. Yeah, that stuff is just terribly unreliable. Um, I mean, I'm not a halos kind of guy to begin with, but, you know, I don't think that it's any kind of classy and it's not reliable, just no. Yo, beam pattern baller. Yo, what's up? <laughs> Where's the introduction and comparison video for the MLED 2.0 and those sexy looking bi lasers? Ah, yeah, see, I, that was one of the first things that I mentioned. We haven't done the, uh, the output uh, video for that. Um, we've done a retrofit, Val did a retrofit with the MLED 2.0, so you get a little, little taste, you know, a little TRS taste of what we think about the MLED 2.0. Um, yeah, we haven't done it. It's definitely on the schedule. We'll do a, like a full overview. I think what we're going to do is like a full overview of all the projectors for 2020, including like the MLED 2.0, the UPS um, Power Plus by LED with the laser. We'll do the MLED or the, uh, the Mini H1 8.0 when that comes out. Of course, we'll include the 5.0, which is a benchmark. Um, so I would say within the next month or two, we'll do a full scale video um, and we'll put all the videos online and put them on our website so you guys can check it out. But I mean, I've seen that projector obviously countless times and mm, yes. it has a baller beam pattern. It does. The GTR Lighting Ultra 2 looks to be the best LED bulb so far. Do you know of any plans to update the two-stroke to try and beat it? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I mean, that's the great thing about, you know, the Morimoto product line is that things never stay the same for too long, um, you know, and so there will be an updated version of the two stroke. Uh, when exactly it'll be coming out, I really can't say for sure. I, genu I genuinely don't even know. Um, you know, that is one thing that I can say progress has been halted on or slowed at least by the coronavirus and Chinese New Year and all that. So we'll see. Fair enough. Is the MLED 2.0 really brighter than the Mini D2S 5.0? Well, um, I mean, I think it depends on the setup, really. I mean, you know, if you put a 50 watt CBI, you know, it depends, really. I think that the, the website does have some information about that, but the, the most important thing, you know, since everybody's asking about the MLE 2.0, with, with that projector is not about necessarily like the maximum intensity. You know, I think that there's kind of like this misconception out there where people say, you know, the maximum lux or the, you know, the lumen rating is, is everything and nothing else matters, but that's, that's actually not quite the case. 
So with the MLED 2.0, it's all about the distribution of light and where the hot spots are located relative to the rest of the beam pattern and how that light is distributed. So, you know, when spread out on a road, you know, you've seen people start doing these, you know, on road shots, like in headlight junkies instead of the wall shots. Um, it's, that's really the right way to look at these things because it's all about the overall distribution of light, how that spreads out, you know, when on a horizontal road ahead. And it's, it's not all about just maximum lux. It's, it's just about that, that distribution within the beam pattern. And that's where most of the attention was spent in developing the ML82.0 to really uh, optimize that just so that, you know, for you, when you're sitting behind the driver's seat, looking out onto the road, you know, you have the best visibility. So that's, that's like the key concept between, you know, behind that whole projector. Same for low beam and high beam. It is, you know, it is very wide, it is very bright, but it's about, it's all about the distribution. That's the key there. All right, what's your favorite XB LED headlight? Current favorite, um, I really like the design of the, the Forerunner. I really like the way that those look. I think it's a huge upgrade over the stock lights. Really sharp looking. Um, obviously all of them have the sequential, so I can't really say that's a great feature about it. But um, the new ones coming out for the 2020 Super Duty, the updated Super Duty, those things are gonna be gonna be really sharp. Okay. Yeah, gonna be really sharp. So I'm, I'm particularly excited about those and we'll, we'll see those coming out probably sometime maybe late summer or fall. Sweet. What makes the anti-reflective lenses blue and does it do anything? Well, it's the AR coating that just looks blue. And basically what it, it, it does is like, um, it eliminates, oh man, you're really testing my technical knowledge here. Eliminates like certain wavelengths of light. There's a special name for it that Yoshi told us. Oh God, Yoshi. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it looks blue because it's an anti-reflective coating and chromatic aberration makes it brighter. Cool. We'll just let Yoshi explain those. Well, look, I mean, you know, I can't do it all, right? I mean... <laughs> when and how did TRS first start? Oh, God. I, I could do this all the time. I could tell a long story about this. Um, started TRS uh, almost 15 years ago, actually. June of 2005 is when I started the company. I was uh, just out of high school, just out of my senior year in high school, and I was driving my pimp Dodge Stratus RT Coupe. Uh, wanted some cooler headlights for the thing, but there were no aftermarket projector assemblies. And so, um, you know, being a kind of a hands-on kind of guy, um, you know, I went out there and tried to figure it out, tried to figure out how I can just basically pimp my headlights. And I was friendly with a guy who ran the body shop at the, um, it was like a local Porsche Audi dealership up in Cleveland where I grew up. And I was up there kind of telling him what it is that I wanted to do with the headlights. And he gave me a busted pair of headlights from an Audi A6 that was in a car accident. Took them home, took the guts out of the inside, basically took those parts down to my basement. I hid them so my parents couldn't find them and didn't didn't know what I was up to. Um, and then I think they were maybe out running some errands or like out for a weekend or something like that. Took the lights off my Stratus, you know, baked them apart, which was baking headlights apart was a pretty common thing at the time. People were doing like blackout headlight mods sure. and stuff like that. Then just busted out the Dremel and started hacking away. It was god awful. It was probably the world's worst retrofit ever. Nuts and bolts and glue and you know, all kinds of parts that don't belong inside of headlights, but um, it worked. It ended up working. I had to have my dad help me out with the wiring, um, but it certainly uh, was a catalyst for much more, as you can kind of see. Uh, but that was ultimately the beginning. Yeah, I started, I started doing retrofits for people um, on like the Stratus forums, HID Planet when it was uh, like HID forums still before it was even HID Planet. Um, you know, and I was a big like enthusiastic member there and that's kind of where kind of where all this stuff started yeah awesome what would be your go-to budget headlight build go-to budget headlight build so if i was doing a retrofit yep. you know I, for whatever reason i like always when i think of like a classic retrofit in my mind i always think of the previous generation tacoma headlights still you know i mean for forever you know like that was like the bread the bread and butter you know of our customer base cool. and you know uh, you just can't beat like a nice you know, mini, mini D2S 5.0, the threaded shaft, the easy H4 adapter. So I'd go D2S 5.0s, basically just like a Morimoto stage three kit, Morimoto ballast, Morimoto D2S bulbs, shrouds. I mean, the black Apollos are pretty sweet, but the Panameras are also pretty solid. H4 moto control and that's it. Yep. I mean, 
300 bucks, and I mean, you've really upped your headlight game there. Sure. And it's like, what, that would probably take a half an hour to do that retrofit? Thereabout. You've done a few of those yourself? Quite a few, yeah. Yeah, how many Tacomas have you had? Uh, I've only had two. Okay. Does that include the one you have now? No, that's three. Jeez, yeah, I have three. Okay, but you've retrofitted how many sets of Probably 20, 25, yeah. It is super easy with the Mini D2S. Right, right. Where can I learn more about retrofitting? I mean, you could call TRS. We could talk, we could talk your ear off about retrofitting. If you want to learn more about retrofitting, um, you know, HID Planet is is still a, real, a really good resource for that. You know, there's a lot of information that's still present on that website that's good for, you know, tips and tricks and whatnot. But I think that probably the best resources that I would recommend today are either going to be, you know, either other people on Headlight Junkies who are really knowledgeable and willing to help, you know, not just willing to, you know, be an ass. Um, or our YouTube channel. Um, we have a lot of really great information. Val's made a lot of really good videos lately. Um, you know, I think that cover a lot of different things from, you know, product selection to tips on opening headlights, everything in between, and then resealing them. So yeah, check out our YouTube channel. Would you choose the Mini D2S or the MLED 2.0 for your next setup? Oh man, um, I've always considered myself kind of an HID kind of guy, but the MLED 2.0 is definitely, definitely got my heart right now. That projector is, is really hard to beat. And the simplicity, I mean, there's really no disadvantages to it. You know, I mean, I think the only thing that people say is bad is that it's costly, you know, but like, if you think about it, that is your ballast, that is your bulbs, you know, that is your wiring. You don't really need anything else. So when you add up the cost of buy Xenons with all the gear you need, it's basically apples to apples. Right. So MLED 2.0, yeah. Awesome. Do you think that housings are finally getting good enough to not retrofit? Uh, I'm not really sure. I think that's kind of, I'm not sure the context on that question. Uh, what do you, what do you think they're, they're talking about? Like, performance. like, aftermarket like, like XBLEDs, yeah. like, does that start to blur the line of the need to retrofit? I mean, you know, OEM headlights, I mean, if you have a halogen reflector headlight, you know, I think the performance is only so good. Of course. It's not bad, but I mean, you know, halogen reflector headlights from 2020 are probably no better than halogen reflector headlights from a decade ago. So I would say, yeah, absolutely go for it. I think, I still think that, you know, halogen projector headlights, even a lot of OEM HID headlights are still pretty crappy in terms of, you know, what I think we here at TRS would consider standard, sure. you know, as far as like good light output. There's a lot of cars I get behind the wheel of, like whether it's like a friend's car or a rental and I'm like, are these headlights even on? With the XBLEDs, you know, I mean, there are some models that I think that the performance could be, could stand to be improved, like some of the earlier ones that came out. But again, I mean, with Morimoto, like really good at, you know, upping the ante and kind of never leaving well enough alone. And so that being said, I mean, I think that, you know, for a lot of the ones that have come out, especially more and more recently, the output's fantastic right out of the box. And I mean, there's really nothing you could do to, you know, improve on that. Um, the other thing is that, you know, Morimoto is really designing those headlights so that they're all, DOT approved, and so you have, you know, the benefit of that brighter, you know, whiter light, you know, wider, all that good stuff, but they're still compliant. So, you know, it's kind of the best of both worlds, in my opinion. And I'm blind. I mean, like, I can't see sh driving at night. So like, you know, this is a necessity for me to get headlights, you know? Yeah. What's your oldest memory of modifying your headlights? Oh, <laughs> this is a trick question. Not. You probably know the answer to this. I know the answer to question. This is a trick question. Who asked this? I'm not saying who asked this question. <sighs> they didn't give their name. Is, is this a confessional? No, it's not. What did the Sharpie do to you? <laughs> what, what did the blue Sharpie do to you? This is like career ending. <laughs> no, we all started somewhere. Truth. Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> my first my first ever memory of modifying my headlights, I think, I mean, this is obviously before, before I, you know, did the retrofit thing. You know, I mean, I was, man, I was like 16. Don't judge me, right? I was just trying to, trying to get some blue headlights, like my, oh my you know, like, okay. So I, um, whatever, I was driving my Stratus, 9007 halogen bulbs, you know, halogen reflector headlight. Um, I mean, this was like, the year 2000, you know, like HID headlights were like just coming out and I wanted, I wanted blue headlights for my car. So what'd you do? So I took the bulb out of the headlight and I colored it with blue Sharpie. And the second I turned it on, the blue Sharpie smoked up, stained my reflector. And that was a big fail. But you know, you've got to fail in order to succeed, right? You got to start somewhere. So please don't hold me to that. I'm sorry. Sorry, headlight junkies. What is a passive demon eye? What is a passive demon eye? 
Uh, passive demon eye is when you paint the front side of your cutoff shield so that it, you know, basically through the projector lens, you see the color of that shield from the front. So there's no actual LED or anything that actually lights up. It's yeah. just painting the front side of your cutoff shield. People do it blue, white, pretty most commonly. It has to be like a high temp paint though, right? Yeah, I mean, if you do that, use extremely high temperature paint. Please also mask any junctions or, or hinges on your bi-xenon mechanism because I've seen a lot of failures with that where people just clog it all up with paint and the paint, the paint melts and nothing works anymore. But you gotta think that there's an HID bulb right behind that mm -hmm. and that shield is blocking that light and so it absorbs a fucking load of heat. Mm -hmm. So if you don't use like grill paint, I mean you might even need something higher, like higher rated than that. Uh, that paint will smoke off and you'll be like me and you'll ruin your headlight like I did way back in the day. Whatever happened to the laser bulbs? The laser bulbs. Um, so we actually, uh, we have the patent for that, but it has not been uh, commercialized or has not materialized into a marketable product because of the fact that the raw materials required to produce such a thing are just so costly that, you know, like we would have six to $800 into a set of bulbs to produce them, you know, and then would have to obviously Know, mark that up because um, we're, we're a business. Um, so if you're willing to pay a thousand dollars for a set of plug-and-play laser headlight bulbs, give me a call and I can get you a pair. Otherwise, we need to wait a little bit longer for the technology to come down in price before that's feasible. Interesting. Uh, can the lenses on XB LED headlights be etched? Yes. Yeah, we have etched um, a lot of different lenses for customers with XB headlights who have taken them apart, sent them in. Um, I know we've done Super Duties, I think Rams, F-150s. Definitely doable. Sweet. Yeah, yeah, just like anything else. And the last question for the day, why does Val always look so serious in his videos? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Val, any comments on that? Uh, I'm new to the camera, so Val's, we're getting there. We're getting there. Yeah, you know, being behind camera's kind of got its, uh, it's got its quirks, man. It's not as, it's not as natural as some can make it seem. <laughs> One last question. Okay. Is there going to be any RGB strips for the XB lights? RGB strips. So like DRL boards? boards. Yeah, yeah. So um, we have noticed a considerable downwards trend, downwards trend in the sales of DRL boards, you know, for like the common vehicles that they're designed for, like 15 plus F-150, the Sierras, the Rams. And I think it's just because, you know, I mean, the introduction of the XB headlights changes things. Um, those headlights are a huge pain in the to take apart, et cetera. And so we will make some DRL boards for some of the most popular uh, XB headlights, like the Super Duties, the F-150s, the Rams, um, to start. And uh, we'll see how it goes. I mean, I think it could be, it should be, I mean, much easier for people to install because the butyl rubber sealant and uh, yeah, see what happens. Sweet. So I think that's it for the uh, headlight junkies for this time, at least. Hopefully there'll be a future one. Hopefully there will. All right, guys. Well, uh, yeah, thanks for all your questions. That was, um, you know, that was very thoughtful of you guys. I enjoyed answering them. I certainly enjoyed uh, my time on the go-kart today. And um, if you guys want, go ahead and post up some more. And uh, we'll be back to it probably doing something a little bit different next week. And uh, we'll get you guys some answers. So cheers. TRS Matt. I'm out. <laughs>